In your experience, really, what is the, I guess, the effect of the outcome of a person who decides to not have adjuvant therapy versus having it? So if they're high risk and they're undergoing radiation, then of course there's a greater chance that the cancer will come back. Uh, there's, the difference will vary depending on how high the risk of return is. But let's say someone has a projected cure rate of 80% with radiation plus hormone blockade. That would be uh, someone perhaps with a basic or a favorable azure ca uh, category or stage of prostate cancer. If they skip the hormone blockade, their cure rates may drop down to 65%, 70%. And who would be a candidate for this type of uh, adjuvant hormone therapy? In the prostate cancer world, of course, we look at stage, low, intermediate, and high. And high-risk patients who are undergoing radiation, it's probably malpractice for them not to get adjuvant hormone treatment in 2020, uh, unless they're 85 or 90 years old. And uh, the uh, men that are intermediate risk, uh, this is changing, but uh, typically a short course of hormone therapy is given along with the radiation. Uh, it isn't the policy with surgery. And when it comes to hormone therapy, we have first generation, second generation. So when we're talking about adjuvant therapy, are we talking only about first generation hormone therapy? Well, most of the studies have been done with just Lupron uh, or Lupron type medications. But uh, it's clear that the, what you call the second generation medicines like Extandi, Erlita, Zaytiga, and Nubeca um, have greater anti-cancer horsepower and little, if any, additional side effects. So anyone that is gunning for a cure, I think, has to logically consider using one of these second-generation hormone blockade agents in conjunction with Lupron. Is there a certain age you would not suggest um, for them to have adjuvant therapy just for the sake of tolerating maybe the side effects of hormone therapy plus either the surgery or the radiation? Definitely. There's actually a certain age when you don't even treat treatable cancers uh, because you know, it takes more than 10 years for people to get sick and die from, even from high-risk prostate cancer. So if someone's already 90 years old, you might just watch it. Or uh, if someone feels there's a role for hormone therapy, this is a good place to talk about something like Casadex, which is a much milder pill than Lupron and has uh, pretty significant anti-cancer effects, but without all the same side effects. And is adjuvant hormone therapy advisable for patients doing radical prostatectomy, period? Well, definitely not in men that have intermediate risk prostate cancer. In fact, there are some issues now that raise the question whether intermediate risk prostate cancer patients need hormone therapy either when they undergo radiation. Um, and that's because the radiation has gotten so much better. And then really we have to mention that these new PSMA PET scans are so much better at detecting early metastatic disease that when they're clear, one has to wonder, do we really need to do hormone therapy to treat micrometastatic disease since we know that the chances of something being out there is much less when the PSMA PET scan is clear. I know that when we have conversations with patients and we're talking about hormone therapy, we mention always the concept of osteoporosis and taking medications to prevent that. On short course, short course hormone therapy and adjuvant, the case, um, do they need to be taking those osteoporosis drugs? Maybe not. Uh, the, you know, men as they get older can get osteoporosis without hormone treatment. So uh, probably starting at age 65 or 70, men should consider getting a bone density scan and certainly if they have pre-existing osteoporosis, whether they take hormone therapy or not, they need treatment. Should a short course of hormone therapy be routinely administered um, osteoporosis therapy? Probably not. Um, but we typically do administer uh, prophylactic osteoporosis treatment in men that have long course hormone blockade. So have you ever had patients embark upon treatment, they experience so many side effects and they just decide that they cannot handle this anymore and they wanna stop? No one immediately comes to mind, but it is comforting for people to know that they can stop early if they want to. And the um, measures that we're uh, implementing to try and counteract side effects like weight training and diet are very effective. Um, generally, people who embark down this pathway have given it serious thought. They sort of count the cost in advance. They make preparations, and they get through it pretty nicely. 
Uh, some men do have lingering effects, especially when they get in their mid to late 70s, where their testosterone doesn't recover completely. And perhaps sometime we should talk about uh, giving testosterone to those people after they've all the treatment should have worn off and it hasn't. Uh, that doesn't happen too often, but uh, maybe um, one out of five or six men over age 75 will have lingering low testosterone even after the treatment uh, should have worn off. Thank you for watching. If you would like more information, you can visit our website, pcri.org. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week.